This is Paul Turner, the Immigration Barrister Imperium Chambers. Please subscribe to my channel and if you have any immigration problems, please get in touch with me and I'll do my best to help you. Today uh, I'm putting the question, which is, is uh, Rwanda Priti Patel's Madagascar plan? By that I mean the unlawful and inhumane plan to relocate vulnerable uh, asylum seekers to a third world country which has, at best, a poor human rights record. Um, this was also an idea mooted by a certain country uh, in the 20th century to remove people it didn't want in its society to an island off the coast of Africa, Madagascar. That plan did not work either. It appears in reality it could be a case of throwing the most vulnerable people out of the frying pan and into the fire. What makes it more troubling is that the civil service have not apparently uh, been able to support the plan fully or, or at all, we're not quite sure, as it has not been shown to be cost effective or will have the deterrent effect hoped for by the Home Office. This is the latest uh, in the line of proposals which seem more in tune with uh, a certain mid 20th century German government and its attempt to, to um, uh, remove undesirables and treat people who are uh, don't quite fit in um, for the sake of populism. Indeed, the Secretary of State at the moment uh, leans to the right, she supports hanging, has bullied staff, and then put people into unsanitary camps on the basis of their race, age, and sexuality, where that some of them were abused and effectively detained, something the courts were not overly pleased with. Um, the reason for our Rwanda appears to be that, that there were abject failures to strike a deal with Ghana and Albania, but after uh, agreeing a £120 million deal with Rwanda, asylum seekers are to be flown to a camp in East Africa and then they will be encouraged to settle there, i.e. granted refugee status in Rwanda. Um, this will only ap uh, apply to male migrants who arrive illegally and, and array, uh, brings about several concerns. First being that there isn't any real safe legal route for asylum seekers to come to the UK. Firstly and foremost, it appears to be unlawful and put the United Kingdom in breach of its international obligations to deal with refugees. Secondly, and again, this draws on parallels with the uh, German government uh, of the 20th century, it appears that it, it discriminates in respect of only single male asylum seekers. So on the face of it, it's discriminatory and not in tune with what one would hope for in a 21st century liberal democracy. Thirdly, it's a move which is likely to break families apart in the event that families decide to travel separately. Women and children can stay and the men can go off and live in Rwanda and make a new life there if they can. Fourthly, as of uh, in 2020, the US State Department report produced a, a, a report on Rwanda and it appears to be, the, uh, as opposed to what the government says, the, not the safest country in the world. The report start, uh, states in part that Rwanda is, and I'm quoting from the report, this is the beginning, that there are significant human rights issues involved, unlawful and arbitrary killings by the government, forced disappearances by the government, torture by the government, harsh and life-threatening conditions in detention facilities and arbitrary detention. There are political prisoners, politically motivated uh, reprisals against individuals located not only within Rwanda but outside Rwanda, arbitrary and unlawful interference with privacy um, and serious restrictions on free expression, press and the internet, including threats of violence against journalists, censorship and website blocking. Substantial interference with the rights of peaceful assembly and freedom of association. All, all, these are all things we take for in common uh, uh, as being normal in the United Kingdom. Um, the report goes on to say that, that there, are, there are overly restrictive non-organisational uh, laws and restrictions on political participation. The report goes on to talk uh, about the fact that the government committed arbitrary unlawful killings and that conditions in detention were appalling and in some cases life-threatening. Now, this is hardly what I would call the safest country in the world, and it does not uh, compare with the United Kingdom. While the Home Office is very keen to get the planes off the ground, no doubt for good press reasons, uh, there does not seem to have been any announcement as to how the asylum seekers will be able to access legal help. 
something that is open to asylum seekers in the United Kingdom. Um, there doesn't appear to be anything uh, or any announcement as to how they are going to get their help. Um, and asylum cases are often complex and require a lot of work to get them into shape. I, I've been doing this for over 20 years and I, and I understand the complexities of asylum cases and proving a case. Um, this often meet, it involves meeting clients and obtaining documents, something that would be almost impossible to do in Rwanda. This would appear to be a further breach of the UK's international obligations, both under the ECHR and also the UN Refugee Convention, particularly given Rwanda's less than ideal uh, human rights record. What is really troubling is no one has any idea if this will work. Apparently those who have been displaced by troubles caused in no part by, small, by Western adventurism will not be granted refugee status in the UK, but in a third world country. Um, hence, out of the frying pan and into the fire. And, and this is in a country with a, a best a questionable human rights record, and one where it is reported that dissent against the government is not really tolerated. Given the relatively small amount of money spoken on, uh, spent on the broken asylum system, this uncosted, untested and probably unworkable idea seems doomed to fail. It is often mooted. Uh, it, indeed, other countries have tried sending people to Rwanda, but it didn't work, Israel in particular. It is often mooted that the asylum system costs the UK taxpayer £1.5 billion a year. This is a huge sum of money, but it has to be seen in the light of the government wasting over £3.5 billion on buying duff or defective PPE equipment during the COVID pandemic. Apparently that doesn't matter. This is an obvious attempt from, uh, by the government to distract uh, from its recent bouts of law breaking. This move has been described as unworkable and unethical, and one that's probably going to cost the UK taxpayer billions of pounds amongst uh, an, extent, uh, an increasing cost of living crisis. As I say, it, it, it's an attractive policy for the right wing and, and for the red wall voters, um, but in reality, uh, it, it's not been costed, it's not been worked out whether it will work, it was not been even been worked out whether it's going to deter people from just getting back on a boat and coming back to the UK and then just not claiming asylum but staying in the UK illegally. Um, and at the moment, uh, whilst one cannot condone people smuggling at all, it, it, it's a heinous crime and puts people's lives at risk. Um, at present, the only way to enter the country, save for a few schemes that have set uh, not very many people over the last six years, the only way to get into the United Kingdom is to gain entry illegally, um, and the UN Refugee Convention does not um, exclude people who do so. Um, it does seem to me, um, given the fact that Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak were recently handed fines for breaking their own COVID laws, um, and, and given the need to do something or appear tough, that this policy is designed more in line with that than any regard or any proper respect for people's human rights, especially the most vulnerable. The Secretary of State clearly shifts to seek the responsibility of the protection of asylum seekers under a policy that would expose them to the most vulnerable people, to, the most, to arbitrary detention, ill treatment and torture, in official and unofficial facilities, according to the aforesaid um, US State Department report of 2020. So far from sending people to uh, an African idyllic paradise in the safest country on the world, it really appears to be a very different picture. But this is clearly a policy that appeals to the right wing. Um, and as I say, it appears more like the Priti Patel's uh, Madagascar plan, i.e. remove the undesirables and gain a lot of public support rather than deal with things lawfully and in a humane manner, something I think that was promised by the Secretary of State quite a while ago. Um, I hope I've explained or outlined my views on the matter and why I think it's unworkable um, and probably illegal, and it will no doubt face uh, numerable challenges in the courts. Um, thank you very much for watching this video. Please do not hesitate to contact me if you're concerned about your immigration status, particularly if you're an asylum seeker, and I'll do my level best to help you. Thank you again. Please subscribe to my channel. This is Paul Turner, the Immigration Barrister at Imperium Chambers.